Welcome to Legal Toolkit, bringing you the latest legal trends and business initiatives to help you manage your law firm. With your host, Jared Correa. You're listening to Legal Talk Network. Welcome to another episode of the award-winning Legal Toolkit podcast here on the Legal Talk Network. If you were looking for season three of The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu, let me save you some time. Just watch season one again. If you're a returning listener to the show, welcome back. If you're a first-time listener, hopefully you'll become a long-time listener. And if you're Buster Scruggs, you value hospitality and don't suffer haters. As always, I'm your show host, Jared Korea. And in addition to casting this pod, I'm the CEO of Red Cave Law Firm Consulting, which offers subscription-based law practice management consulting services for law firms, bar associations, and legal vendors. Check us out at redcavelegal.com. I'm also the COO of Gideon Software Inc., which offers chatbots, a first-to-market chatbot builder, and predictive analytics created specifically for law firms. Find out more at www.gideon.legal. You can listen to my other, other podcast, The Lobby List, a family travel show I host with my wife, Jessica, on iTunes. Subscribe, rate, and comment. I did another podcast because I don't have enough to do, right? But here on The Legal Toolkit, which is the podcast you're listening to right now, We provide you twice each month with a new tool to add to your own legal toolkit so that your practices will become more and more like best practices. And who doesn't want that? In this episode, we're going to talk about the future of legal process management. I guess we're also going to talk about the present of legal process management. So we got it all cleared. But before I introduce today's guest, let me take a moment to thank our sponsors. Abby Connect has delivered premium live receptionist and answering services to lawyers since 2006. You can try them out for free at abbyconnect.com. Scorpion crushes the standard for law firm online marketing with proven campaign strategies to get attorneys better cases from the internet. Partner with Scorpion to get an award-winning website and ROI-positive marketing programs today. Visit scorpionlegal.com forward slash podcast. Nexa, formerly known as Answer One, is a leading virtual receptionist and answering service provider for law firms. Learn more by giving them a call at 800-267-9371 or online at www.nexa.com. TimeSolve is the number one web-based time and billing software for lawyers, providing solutions since 1999. TimeSolve provides the most comprehensive billing features for law firms big and small. www.timesolve.com. So my guest today is Nathan Wenzel. Nathan is the founder and CEO of Simple Legal. Simple Legal makes streamlined cloud-based software for e-billing and matter management for in-house counsel. Nathan founded Simple Legal in 2013, and before that, he was a consultant with Edge Solutions, Inc. for nearly a decade. He's a graduate of Arizona State's Cary School of Business. So, Nathan, welcome to the big show, sir. Thanks, Jared. Happy to be here. Good. How are you doing today? Doing well. Doing well. Nice. And you're podcasting. It's a beautiful day. So, let me ask you. You were at... ASU, I want to know a little bit about what a Sun Devil is, right? Because I know there are Blue Devils at Duke. There's even the Tasmanian Devil in Warner Brothers cartoons. But let's kick it off with some good devil talk and tell me what the defining characteristic of the Sun Devil is. Well, I think uh, there's a good number of Sun Devils that are probably pretty similar to the uh, the cartoon Tasmanian Devil. Uh, I think I think when I was at school there, there were maybe 40 or 45,000 students. I think the school now across all its campuses, something like 70 or 75,000 students. And it definitely means that in the summer, no one will come visit you. Uh, Cause it's about 115 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit uh, outside on, on a good day. It's uh, it is a warm place to be in the summer. <laughs> but I understand beer is thirst quenching, right? You get a past blue ribbon, sit outside. It's not terrible, right? <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of that and, and you're in the pool. <laughs> well, that's good. Nothing wrong with that. I always like to be in the pool. All right. So so we don't make the sponsors mad. Let's talk about legal stuff. So you worked for a while as a consultant before starting a software company. And so did I. So I'm kind of interested in this model. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you did as a consultant and how that informed your decision to start Simple Legal? Sure. So myself and my co-founder, Patrick Goderick, who's our CTO, he and I ran a consulting firm together for about a decade, 
And it, it's how we found the space. My background is a little more finance. Patrick's more on the technology side. And so we had as clients what would today be called legal operations groups, but were enterprise legal services and in-house legal departments and really helping them understand their data. And that was how we found the space and, and really got into writing software through some of the financial market turmoils and some challenges that were throughout the industry there. And we thought, wow, there should be better software for these teams that they go out and spend all this money on the software. Then they turn around and pay us to, to help make it better. And it really goes with my belief that people and process solve problems. And that's what we did as consultants. But then technology lets you scale those solutions. And that was really the next step in, in what we wanted to put together. And from there, we, we launched Simple Legal in 2013. That makes a ton of sense. So what you're telling me is you were doing legal process before it was cool. Yeah, yeah. We were part of a, a group that would go and, and talk, or our clients really would go and talk at these conferences and about the things they were doing and no one else was doing them. And now there are organizations, whether it's through the ACC or through CLOCK, that talk about nothing but legal operations. So it's a pretty exciting time. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So as a consultant, now as a software company CEO, I think you're really well positioned to talk about the things that in-house counsel can do better in terms of legal process management. So what are some of those things? Yeah, so I think first I'll say again, it's people and process that solve problems. And so even though I'm CEO of a, a legal software company, I think the first thing that you want to do is figure out the problem to solve and how to go about solving it. And then what technology is going to do is let you scale that solution. So in, in a lot of places, what that means is um, as you're maybe a solo general counsel or a really small legal department, the first thing you want to do is just kind of get your bearings, right? Get a baseline in place. And a lot of times that means from a financial perspective, right? So where's the money going? And, and you probably know, but every other leader in your company can speak with precision, whether it's in sales or in marketing, even HR, which is much more about succession planning and retention strength and bench strength than the company. Every other leader is speaking and talking quantitatively. So one of the first steps is really to get get a system in place that will allow you to speak quantitatively. And so it's usually a spend management system or a matter management system. From there, as you start to mature, you want to implement initiatives that you want to be able to do, again, what every other department head is doing is come back to the CFO, the CEO, and talk about the ROI, talk about your initiatives and how that turned into a benefit. And in so in a lot of ways, that that's around for legal, it's around cost containment and really around how to staff your legal department. And so if you can bring metrics, then you're on par with every other leader in the company. And that's that's really the, the first place to, to start. I'm speaking my language from my friend. Well put. So how does process management in that context, in the in-house counsel context, do you think differ from process management for a guard variety attorney, if there even is such a thing anymore? Yeah, well, it's so it's kind of goes back to my consulting days, right? At a law firm, there's a certain set of business metrics to operate to, and a lot of that's billable hours, right? And and in the consulting side of the world, it's utilization and, and realized bill rates. And so you have a different perspective on how to operate your business. Whereas on the in-house side, I think first, the attorneys get to spend a lot more time with their ultimate clients, right? The business users, and, and they get to see their efforts translate into business outcomes. And so there's this movement toward in-house for a lot of folks where I think what they get is a really fulfilling career because they get to see the outcomes of their work a lot more clearly from their customer and then their end customer. So I think it's a much more exciting place. And so that changes how you operate. It's why a lot of in-house uh, teams run the commercial contracts because you stay closer to that sales team. So that, that's really the main thing is you work in the same building with your clients. And so I think it makes it a lot more interesting. Cool. All right. So we've got some baseline established here. So we're going to cut here and end part one of the podcast. But don't worry. Part two is going to be even better. In the interim, here are some of the things that you should buy. Your legal work requires your full attention. So how can you build lasting relationships with new or existing clients while juggling your caseload? Try Abby Connect, the friendly, highly trained and motivated live receptionists who are well known for providing consistent quality customer service and support to law firms just like yours. Every connection matters. So call Abby Connect today at 833-ABBY-WOW to get started with your free 14 day trial and $95 off your first bill. 
Do you feel like your marketing efforts aren't getting you the high value cases your firm deserves? For over 15 years, Scorpion has helped thousands of law firms just like yours to attract new cases and to grow their practices. As a Google Premier Partner and winner of Google's Platform Innovator Award, Scorpion has the right resources and technology to aggressively market your law firm and to generate better cases from the internet. For more information, visit scorpionlegal.com forward slash podcast today. All right, thanks for sticking with us. We're still here. We're approaching part two of this Legal Toolkit podcast. Now that I've located my official Lime Rock Larry Bird holographic basketball card set, let's get back to our conversation with Nathan Wenzel of Simple Legal. We're here to talk about process management for in-house counsel. So Nathan, you have mentioned before you had a financial background too, in addition to the consulting work you did. So could you talk a little bit more about your background in finance and how you think it affects what you do in the legal industry still? Sure. So as you mentioned earlier, I'm a Sun Devil, graduated from Arizona State University and really came into the corporate world, not directly into legal, and saw how businesses operated, was in a revenue management group for a while, was in a kind of general budgeting and forecasting group. And really the main thing that I saw outside of legal first were these processes, right, which is looking at how to scale systems, how to operate where strictly hiring is not your only method of actually scaling out what you can do, and then how to organize the process where one part of your goal is to deliver results, but the other part is to be able to talk to the CFO about what it took to achieve those results. And so that background is really what shaped how I think about legal operations and ideally how when I have a chance to talk with our customers about how we can help them push the legal operations concept forward. And it's that financial background for me that, that really guides a lot of that. Cool. And you talked about this a little before, like when you were talking about how in-house counsel should be presenting information that other leaders in the corporation are presenting at the same level with the same metrics or similar metrics. That's mostly about optics, I think, more than anything else. But how does effective process management for in-house counsel affect the bottom line of a corporation? How does in-house counsel managing this stuff in a better way make the finance department happy? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So if we look at the maturity path that a legal operations department will follow or that legal operations within a legal department will follow, step one is the transparency, right? And so it's going to make the finance department happy if they can see what's coming. When there's a surprise expense that comes through, not because something came up in the business that's unexpected, but because something got lost in email, right? That's the kind of thing that makes the finance department fairly unhappy, and then the CEO and then the shareholders. And so having processes that are not email-based processes where things can get lost, but where they're in systems brings transparency to where finance can see that information. And not only does that make the finance department happy, it improves the relationship between the general counsel and the CFO. It improves the relationship between the legal department and the FP&A group. They're really just trying to get a handle on where those numbers are going to be, right? There are expenses that are going to be there. Things are going to cost what they're going to cost. And the, the main goal of the finance department is no surprises. And that's why you want to get out of an email-based process and into something that handles this as a system. As you get more mature and, and you have a larger staff and you're able to take on other, other items, you start to have these cost containment initiatives where you can look at what sort of gets popularized up through the insurance side of the house, which is really looking at a bill and saying, well, wait, this was, this was a bit excessive and this was block billing. And you can, you can look through that and you can find these things and You know, our software helps with that and other softwares can help with that. And there are people that can help with that. And that's important. Law firms should follow your billing guidelines. But the real benefit and the things that will really start to make the finance department happy and start to make the effectiveness of your programs really show is when you look at the legal work that you need to perform. And that's the demand, right? And that's going to come from needing to file a new patent, needing to hire someone that requires a visa, dealing with an employment issue, dealing with the lawsuit dealing with ongoing corporate work, all of that demand comes through. And then you now have a portfolio of supply. You have an in-house team, you have law, your traditional law firms, you have niche firms, you have alternative service providers, you have teams that look more like consulting firms and take on maybe some of the tax or the compliance issues. And so when you go to match up this demand and supply and you look at it as a portfolio, now you're really able to, to showcase 
how you're allocating resources and allocating investment. And that, again, now you're speaking the finance department's language. And so those are the things that really move the finance department forward and really move the legal department to look like every other department that's managing with, with metrics and with data. Cool. Well put. Um, so we, this has been a good discussion so far on this topic, but let's extend it just a little bit further. So do you think that effective process management within the in-house counsel suite can reduce legal spend in the corporate environment as well? Because this is like a bottom line consideration as well, obviously. Oh, absolutely. I think, I think the sort of the, the area that a lot of legal departments like to go to first is they'll showcase a discount, right? You talk to a law firm and they say, hey, look, we really want to do business with you. And in fact, we're going to give you a 10% discount off our rack rates. And, and then maybe you can push them further and say, look, well, if, I, if I'm able to pay you within 15 days of receiving your invoice, how about we take another you know, 2, 5, 10% off a quick pay discount? And so a lot of departments will go to that. And that's a good place to start. It's a number that you can measure. You can get there without a whole lot of effort and overhead. And that way you keep your focus on protecting and growing the business. But then as your department grows, you can get to saying, all right, how should I actually allocate? What's my high value work and my very non-routine work? These are the things that maybe they're bet the company level initiatives, or maybe they're really high risk litigations. And then what are those items that are a bit more routine and then require a certain amount of business knowledge? Uh, and in fact, because they require that business knowledge, I want to bring that in house. And so not only is saving money about finding those discounts and ensuring compliance to your guidelines, but it's really about managing the portfolio of demand that you have and matching it up with the right kind of supply. And that's where you can point to some massive cost savings. Uh, and if you, as you get further along, we've had customers where they target legal expense as a percentage of company revenue, and they're able to identify and create comp plans around that and it's, it's a way that they've been able to showcase and get reductions as they, maybe as they acquire a company and bring them in, they're able to find reductions of 35, 40% off of their total legal spend because they look at their portfolio and they manage it like a business. All right, Nathan's spitting fire right now. I think we need to take a break and let him cool down. That was part two of the show. Now, while I try to beat Contra without the benefit of Chief Code, let's listen to these words from our sponsors. If you're missing calls, appointments, and potential clients, it's time to work with Nexa Professional. More than just an answering service, Nexa's virtual receptionists are available 24-7 to schedule appointments, qualify leads, respond to emails, integrate with your firm's software, and much, much more. Nexa ensures your clients have the experience they deserve. Give them a call at 800-267-9371 or visit them at nexa.com forward slash podcast for a very special offer. Imagine billing day being the happiest day of the month instead of the day you dread. Nobody went to law school because they love drafting invoices for clients. At TimeSolve, our attorneys save on average over eight hours a month in billing work. That means more billable time and turning billing day into happy day. Learn more about how to get to your time and billing happy place at timesolve.com. That's www.timesolv, leave off the e, dot com. Remember, that's T-I-M-E-S-O-L-V dot com. All right, thanks for coming back one last time. We've hit phase three. So let's continue our conversation with Nathan Wenzel of Simple Legal, who's telling us all about legal process management for in-house counsel. So let's find out more. Nathan, so we've had a good conversation to this point. Can you tell me what's coming down the pipe? Do you see trends in legal process management for in-house counsel that you've been able to identify? Sure. I think one of the biggest trends is that there's actually a profession and a job title and then even a department that's taking shape around it whose primary job is this process management, and that's the legal operations role. And what we've seen is if you kind of wind the clock back, say five, six years, you had this group, Clock Corporate Legal Operations Consortium. To be a member of that group, you used to have to have a legal department of 50 people, and then you were reported directly to the general counsel in a legal ops role. And then what we've seen since then, and we've seen in our customers where a legal operations job title, a legal operations role, will get hired in as the second or third hire that the general counsel makes because process management is so important and because they want the the lawyers to be able to stay focused on protecting and growing the company. And then all of the processes and the operations of of actually managing the department, uh, interacting with finance, managing the vendor processes, 
all of that is become important enough and recognized enough to have its own role where we see them start out with going to seek out consultants to help and then eventually hiring a full-time employee and then as hiring a department. And so that is happening sooner and sooner in the evolution of, of a company. That's awesome. Um, so we've talked a little bit to this point about how in-house counsel can be reactive to what folks are doing in other parts of an organization and trying to meet those standards. But in what ways do you think legal process management can be a driver for change within an organization more broadly? Yeah, I think it's incredibly important and very helpful for the legal department. I think not only can it drive change within the corporation, but one of the, the biggest impacts is it will change, it will drive a change of perception of the legal department within a company. There can be this rather unfair perception of a legal department being a place where people say no and a place where deals go and get slowed down. But really, if you look at legal process management and say, okay, what are the defining objectives of the company? What are we trying to achieve? What are the goals that we need to go and, and strive to hit? And how can legal help there? And one of those areas is if you look at sales contracts, is thinking, all right, how can we speed this up? Are there things that we can do that will help avoid a full review? Are there, are there certain predetermined, acceptable clauses that can go into a contract? To get things signed, you know, how much faster can it be if we look at moving to an e-signature as opposed to everything being on paper. And so looking at these processes in terms of how can they support the company's objectives, you will change the perception of the legal department within the company. And I think that's one of the biggest things that will help and show that legal is there to help push those business objectives, not just to protect the company, but also to help grow the company. Efficient legal processes. And I always thought that was an oxymoron. Um, so Nathan, your company was just acquired. So how does that feel for somebody like you who's, you built up a consulting practice, you built Simple Legal and now Simple Legal has been acquired. Like, first of all, congratulations. And what are your feelings on the current situation? Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, myself and Patrick set out to, to build the company because we believed there was an opportunity to create the next enterprise platform and believe the opportunity was in legal. We see the budgets that flow through there. We see the processes that have been created around legal and that legal can then go and put in place for themselves. And what we wanted to do is really create the platform for the legal department to go out and help drive business objectives forward. And when we looked at what our opportunities were, uh, we saw a path that, that would have gotten us to the same place and, and we could have grown there organically. And then we saw a path with Onnit, who is the company that acquired us, and said, wow, we can leap forward a couple of years here. We can leap forward and go out and achieve our goals and, and stay focused on our part of the market. What we really wanted to put together was a platform that would be used, it's configurable, but that you wouldn't customize. It can do what you needed it to do, but you wouldn't have to write any code to make it do anything. And we kept getting pulled higher and higher into larger and larger companies that wanted to customize things. This lets us stay focused because on is a very customizable and configurable platform. This lets us stay focused on where we are. And so I'm, I'm super excited about it. And I look forward to really driving change in, in legal operations and legal processes for the next six years. Awesome. My, my only disappointment is that you've decided not to retire to Ecuador and drink margaritas all day, but to each his own, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, no, there's still, a lot, there's still a lot more fun to be had in legal ops. So we got one more question for you, right? This is my new segment. I call it tweets you forgot about, wherein I read you back an old tweet of yours, and you get to comment on it. So, Nathan, are you ready? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. Good, because that was largely a rhetorical question, and I was going to ask you anyway. All right, <laughs> here's your tweet from March 2nd, 2019. You wrote, showed my daughter Google Sheets and Docs this a.m., 30 plus years ago, I learned word processing on Multimate. I still remember seeing auto line wrapping for the first time. So I've heard of Multimate, never used it. And I have absolutely no idea what auto line wrapping is. So my question to you is, does that make me a nerd or does that make you a nerd? <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think anyone that gets excited about as you start typing a word and then it automatically jumps down to the next line when it's too long to fit on that page within the margin, I, I think that... Uh, makes me a nerd for being excited about it and uh <laughs> but you've heard of multi-mate so i, I think you're in the club with me <laughs> i know i'm ashamed now 
<laughs> well, thanks for clearing that yeah. up. Well, clearly you love technology. You know a lot about legal process and operations. And I thought this was a really great show. I, should, I thought you covered a lot of stuff in a short time frame. Sadly, everyone out there who's listening, we've reached the end of yet another episode of the Legal Toolkit Podcast. This was the podcast about legal process management for in-house counsel. And we've been talking with Nathan Wenzel of Simple Legal, who's been great. Can I say you've been simply great? Or would that be cheesy? I, I think that's simply perfect. All right. Uh, well done. Well done. All right. I, th- I see we got a whole theme going, brand awareness. Now, I'll be back on future shows with further insights into my soul, the soul of America and the legal market. If you're feeling nostalgic from my dulcet tones, however, you can check out our entire show archive anytime you want at LegalTalkNetwork.com. So thanks again to Nathan Wenzel of Simple Legal for making an appearance as my guest today. All right, Nathan, can you tell everybody how they can find out more about you and about Simple Legal? Sure. The website and the blog is a great place to start, and that's just at simplelegal.com. A lot of good educational content in there as well. Excellent. So thanks again. That was Nathan Wenzel of Simple Legal, who's been tremendous today. Finally, thanks to all of you out there for listening. This has been the Legal Toolkit Podcast, where all patio furniture is half off this month only. Thanks for listening to Legal Toolkit, produced by the broadcast professionals at Legal Talk Network. Join host Jared Correa for his next podcast covering the current business trends for law firms. If you'd like more information about today's show, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Or download the free app from Legal Talk Network in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.